We are going to use these four libraries. Let's read data file. It's called binary.csv. If you look at uh, the structure of the data set, it has 400 observations and four columns. Admit is the response variable. So whether a student was admitted or was not admitted. And then we have GRE scores, GPA, and also rank of the university from where they came. So first we'll do cross tabulation for admit and rank. And our data set is called data. So ideally we should have these frequencies more than five so we are okay here now let's also convert variable admit and rank to a factor variable because they are not actually integer so now if you run structure line you can see that admit and rank are now converted into a factor variable For this we are going to use pairs.panels and I am going to remove first variable. For developing a naive base classification model, we need to make sure that the independent variables are not highly correlated. So let's plot this. The only variables that are numeric are GRE and GPA and correlation between them is not really that strong and correlation coefficient is only 0.38 it's not very high now let's uh, create some box plot ggplot and we can define aesthetics aes where x-axis will have variable admit and y-axis will have gre and let's fill colors based on admit and then we can use plus sign to add next line of code G E O M so geometric underscore box plot and we can also give a title so GG title so you can see the red one is where a student is not admitted and that's the GRE spread Whereas this one is for admit equals one where students are admitted. So there's a significant amount of overlap, but overall average GRE is higher for students who are admitted compared to students who are not admitted. So this uh, plot basically shows there's some potential to develop a classification model, but uh, that model is unlikely to be 100% accurate because there's a lot of overlap between the two. If we do the same thing for GPA, we get this plot. Let's also do a density plot. So first we'll do for GRE on the x-axis and we are going to fill color using admit variable. And we can use a geometric underscore GEOM underscore density let's also use alpha of 0 0.8 so basically it will indicate how transparent the graph is let's use color as black i'm also going to put a title here so you can see overall this density plot where admit is one is uh, on the right side these students have higher GRE scores compared to the red ones where students were not admitted. 
but now you can clearly see there is a significant amount of overlap between the two similarly if you do this for gpa you get this picture here so we'll use random seed set dot seed of 1 2 3 4 so we are going to split it into two number of rows whatever we have in our data and this is with replacement so replace equals t for true so we'll use 80 percent for training data and 20 percent for testing so within i and d and two equals to indicate that i and d is equal to one similarly test So you can see our test data has 75 observations out of 400 and training data set has 325. So naive Bayes algorithm is based on Bayes theorem and the equation is given by P A given B which means probability of event A given that event B occurs so this is given by this formula probability of event a times probability of b given a divided by probability of event b so note that the assumption made in this equation is that a and b are independent so let's consider an example where students are applying for a graduate program in engineering so we can say probability that student is admitted given this student is coming from rank one school using Bayes theorem this probability will be given by probability that the student is admitted so this is a simple calculation so in the training data set we can look at how many students have been admitted divided by how many student applied so that will give us probability that student is admitted so this multiplied by probability that student is coming from rank one school given that the student is admitted and then that is divided by probability that the student is coming from rank one school so let's store model in model and the function is naive underscore base so admit is our response variable so admit as a function of all other variables so I'm going to put dot and for developing the model we use train data so now the model is created let's look at the model so in the training data we have about 68.6% .6 of the data points belonging to category where admit is zero and 31.3% data points where admit equals 1 so in the training data 31.3% of the students were admitted to the program and then we have uh, three other tables so for each uh, quantitative variable in the data set like GRE or GPA it also calculates mean and standard deviation so in this case uh, we are given mean and standard deviation and please note that when we have a normal distribution once we know mean and standard deviation we can calculate any probability so in this analysis uh, whenever you see an independent variable that is numeric we will see its mean and standard deviation values are given and for categorical variable basically you get the probabilities so when the independent variable is categorical for example rank is a categorical variable so this means that the probability that a student who has applied from rank one school given that this student was not admitted so that probability is 0 0.103 similarly we have probability that a student applied from rank one school given that student is admitted so admit equals one so that probability is 0. 245 so these probabilities are given in the table so our data used was train 
and then I connect this to next line where I can filter situations where admit equals zero. So let me put this into quotes and then we connect this to summarize. So mean of GRE and standard deviation of GRE. So if you run this, we get uh, 578.6 and that's the same number as what we have got here for zero. Similarly, standard deviation is 116.325. So 116.325 is the value when admit is zero. And if you run the same thing with one, you get other two numbers. We can also plot the model. So if you run this line, we get actually three plots. This is the third one. So let me go back. This is second and this is first one. Density plot for GRE. We had earlier made a density plot. So that plot looked slightly better. And the next graph is for GPA. And we get this plot for categorical data. So rank is categorical and it has four values. So one, two, three, four. So green means students getting admitted and red means students are not admitted to the program. So clearly you can see that the chances of getting admitted is higher when a student is coming from one ranked school. Whereas a student coming from rank four school still has a chance, but it's much smaller. Let's store predictions in P. So we'll use the model and train data and type of prediction is probability. So this will include all the probabilities. So we can actually take a look at some of these probabilities as well as original data to see what's going on. So we'll look at the first few rows and I'm going to use C for column bind. We'll look at P and training data which is called train. So let's run this. So first applicant has a probability of 0.84%. So roughly 84% chance that this student will not be admitted. And in fact, the uh, reality is that this student was not admitted. So this student had low GRE score, you can see 380 and GPA was 3.61. But uh, this student came from a low ranked university or college. Now, if you look at second applicant has a 62% chance of not getting admitted, but this student in fact was admitted probably because GRE scores are better. So let's store predictions in P1. So then we'll create confusion matrix. Let's call it tab one. And I'm going to put the whole thing in parenthesis so that when I run this line, it will also print the line. So you can see this is the confusion matrix. So 196 students were correctly predicted not to be admitted. And there were 33 correct predictions for students getting admitted. We want misclassification, we are doing one minus. So misclassification is about 29.5%, so very close to 30%. So let's repeat this for test data. So we'll store predictions in P2 and the data is test. Confusion matrix in tab two. And then we use test and tab two, tab two. So if I run these three lines, we get a repeat of what we did earlier. Misclassification is about 32%. To improve these uh, misclassification rates, one thing we can try is while developing the model, we can make use of use kernel capital T for true. So now if we rerun this model, you can see earlier it was 29.5. So it has come down to 27.3. That means accuracy has improved slightly. And with the test data, earlier it was 32%, now it is about 30.7%.